Andrew Fabian is the recipient of the 2020 Kavli Prize in Astrophysics for his groundbreaking discoveries in observational X-ray astronomy. Andrew, congratulations on being the recipient of the 2020 Kavli Prize in Astrophysics, a, a, a wonderful honor. And of course, thank you for joining us. So Andrew, you know, many describe the universe as this vast expanse of silence. But as I understand it, your work and your view is that it's not as silent as perhaps we once thought. What, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that uh, when we look at the gas between galaxies, uh, which is extremely tenuous, you can nevertheless get organized motions of it. You can get pressure waves, which are sound waves propagating through. And it's possible that there is considerable amounts of energy moving around in the sound waves in the clusters of galaxies. And we've found possible evidence for this in some of our X-ray images. And uh, I would stress that when I say sound waves, I'm talking about very low frequency sound waves, well beyond our range of hearing. Uh, when we talk about sound waves that we hear, we're talking about hundreds of cycles per second. And I'm talking about one cycle per 10 million years. So it's a music of the spheres, but you have to have a lot of patience to hear it. <laughs> yeah, or very big ears. <laughs> very big ears, absolutely. When I was a student, I did a project in radio astronomy. And my advisor, I was speaking to him one day, and he told me that he'd been doing some soul searching. He was going to really radically shift his career. And I said, oh, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to shift from radio astronomy to millimeter astronomy. And so I always have wondered, how is it that one picks the frequency of light that one's going to focus their attention on. It seems to be a, a, a very substantial career choice in trying to decide where in the electromagnetic spectrum to focus your attention. <laughs> yeah, with me, it, it was, you know, by chance. And I've tended to work in the X-ray band, looking at X-rays, but I also make use of optical telescopes, infrared telescopes, radio telescopes. So I... I I'm prompted mostly by what I see in the X-ray band, but nowadays you've got to take all wavelengths into account to get a full picture of what you're studying. Your work has focused in a, a wide range of areas in astrophysics, but you've received the prize for the work you've done in X-ray astronomy. Now, many people in the general public, they hear about X-rays, they think about it as a means to look inside of something. Can you just give us a sense how do X-rays play a role in astrophysics? Okay, X-rays are a kind of light. Uh, it's just the uh, frequency is a thousand times higher than that of visible light. And so if you go out and look at the night sky yourself, uh, you see the visible light sky. Um, but if you look with an X-ray telescope, you'll look at frequencies a thousand times higher, and you're looking at objects typically that are a thousand times hotter which means we're looking at things that are millions to billions of degrees in temperature rather than the thousands to tens of thousands of degrees of stars and galaxies. So what we're doing mainly is looking at uh, dead objects in the universe like black holes, neutron stars, white dwarfs and things, and as well as vast seas of very hot gas in the atmosphere, in the universe. The in the universe, there's gas between galaxies that gets squeezed up when galaxies cluster together, and they become very strong X-ray sources. And I've been looking at the interaction between black holes in the centers of these clusters and in the cluster atmospheres, uh, trying to understand how the energy from the black hole gets transmitted out into the surrounding gas. And what are the sizes, just to give people a sense, what are the masses of the black holes that you study with X-ray astronomy? Well, we look at stellar mass black holes, which have got masses from, say, 5 to 25 solar masses. That's 25 times the mass of the sun. Uh, most of the ones we look at are active galaxies or quasars, and their masses are from a million to 10 billion times the mass of the sun. So we're looking at that kind of range of mass of black holes, and they're the, they are the black holes that we know about in the universe. 
And, and, and what do you say to people who bring up the issue? They say, hey, there's so many problems in the world today, poverty, refugee crises, global pandemics. Why should we put funding and effort into a seemingly esoteric subject like studying black holes and studying the cosmos as opposed to focusing on the real world challenges that face us right now? I think I would explain it as uh, what we need to do is stimulate the next generations of scientists. We need to get more people interested in science. I think the current COVID pandemic demonstrates the problem with people in charge who don't understand science. And we've got to propagate the scientific method. And one way to get people to do that is to get them interested in science. And it's quite easy to get members of the public, young children, students, interested and excited in astronomy. And, and, and when it comes to young students, many of whom no doubt are watching this right now, is there any advice that you give to the excited young science student that wants to pursue a career in astronomy or astrophysics? I think what I would tell them that astronomy is very exciting. Uh, I would say that uh, and you can tell this by looking at newspapers and the, the media, that almost once a month there's something new discovered in astronomy. So there's lots going on. It's a very big universe, and you could be the first person to look at a certain galaxy, and you may be the one who discovers something special from it. And uh, what I would also advise them is to make sure they've got a good grounding in physics and mathematics before, ta before starting off. Yeah, absolutely. So, Andrew, thank you again for joining us and congratulations on receiving the Kavi Prize, a wonderful honor and best of luck going forward. Thanks very much, Brian.